Hi everybody, it's Kasha Dupuis from the NOTL Library, the Niagara on the Lake Public Library, um, and I'm here for this week's um, NOTL Library Live Create with Kasha. Um, so this week what we're going to be exploring um, are the way that shape and color um, interact with each other and line as well um, as we explore the art of um, Sonia Deloney. Um, she was um, an artist that was um, uh, from Ukraine. She mostly lived in Paris and she was one of the very first people who were kind of involved in the Cubist movement. So a lot of people think of only Picasso as a Cubist artist. There's some others in there as well, Duchamp and others, but um, she was actually part of that as well in her own way. So let's switch over to the camera. I'll do a quick run through of the things you're going to need um, if you're going to be joining me for this painting today. Okay, so um, I'm going to go through the materials really fast. Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, and then I will show you some examples of Sonia's work, um, and then we'll get right into it. And it's a very simple project today. There's not too much um, technique that I'll have to lead you through. Um, it's more setting the scene, and then it's a cool project to kind of just get, you know, sucked in, to get involved with and, and meditate almost with. So it's a very relaxing one, and it can turn out any way you want it to be. Um, so if you're going to be working with me today to make this project, what you'll need um, is something to paint on. So I have a piece of paper right here. Um, I'm only doing half because it fits really nicely in the camera. Um, sometimes when I go too big, you can't, it gets kind of bug-eyed and, or fish-eyed, fish-eyed, not bug-eyed. <laughs> and then it's hard to kind of get the angles. Um, you're also going to need somewhere that's protected. So I have my big piece of watercolor paper here um, to protect my surface. You're going to need some paint clothes. So clothes you don't mind getting paint on. You're going to need water to wash your brush. You're going to need a paper, piece of paper towel or a rag or a cloth to dry your brush. I found these, um, this towel that had lots of holes in it, probably from the puppies, um, and I tore it all apart and I have all these rags now that I can use for my art. Um, you're going to need some paint, of course. You're going to need your primary colors. So I have red, yellow, and blue. Um, I also have some green because sometimes when these two mix together, they make like a really dark green. I can use both greens in my artwork. Plus you're going to want to have black and white. Um, then you're going to need a pencil to do some sketching to start. Um, and then, of course, you're going to need brushes. Um, oh, I forgot to mention for the paint, these are the colors that I'm working with today. If there's other colors you want to incorporate into your artwork, please, of course, do that. This is your art project, too. If there's pink you want to use or orange or purple or anything, go ahead and add it in there. Um, and same with brushes. Um, I'm going to use my trusty three, so I have my um, square small flat brush. Um, I have my kind of bigger chunkier brush. I have my trusty really fuzzy one here too. That's on the side for today, but I have a, I found a new one, a newer one, and I have a round fine point brush for some details if I want to use them. Use whatever brushes you have though, um, because this project, like I said, um, doesn't need specific things. It just needs some art supplies. Um, also, if you only have big brushes, just paint bigger. I have smaller brushes, so I'm painting on a smaller surface, um, but if you only have big ones, paint big. Um, and I think that's all you're going to need if you're going to be joining me to paint today. So let's switch over really quick. I'll show you some of the artwork that inspired today's um, project. Yeah, so these were both made by Sonia Delaney. Um, and the one on the left is autumn, right? So autumn, so it's kind of um, autumn inspired colors. Um, and the other one that's on the right is called rhythm color um, number uh, 1076. Um, so both of these paintings, if you look very carefully, there's many different kind of colors in them. She uses very bright, vibrant, um, opaque colors in her artwork, so you can't really see through any of the colors. They're very strong colors. Um, and there's a mix of geometric um, and kind of rounded shapes. So if you look at rhythm color number 1076, um, you see those, there's like an X across the middle. Yeah, those are some of the things that if you're not looking at artwork, you might be able to miss because I missed it the first time. I had to do a little bit of research. And that X creates some triangles, which creates some geometric shapes in our artwork. Um, and same with um, the autumn painting on the left. Do you see that there's a line straight up the middle and then another one that goes to the side? Um, with those lines, she's created some triangles that kind of contrast with the, color, with the circles and the colors as well, but with the circles, and that line kind of cuts in between that circle, so it's like a semicircle, um, and it makes her artwork look really interesting. Yeah, so she was very interested um, in the new way of seeing things in art. So 
Um, a lot of it's before Cubist and before a lot of the Impressionists started their artwork, um, artists were very concerned with making things look exactly how they're supposed to look. But then we got this cool thing called the camera, so we didn't need to make things look exactly the same way anymore. We could experiment and paint. People and artists could experiment and paint how they felt instead of showing something exactly how it was, which is awesome. And that's how we get some really exciting, interesting art. Okay, so why don't we get started? So first thing you're going to need is your pencil. And actually, I forgot my normal thing. Just in case we get interrupted today, um, my dogs are home, um, my boys are home, my husband's home because it's a long weekend. Um, so everyone's home today, so there might be some interruptions. No big deal, it will just make it more exciting. Actually, both puppies are kind of sleeping on the carpet over here right now. Um, and because I'm pre-recording this today, um, we shouldn't have any internet issues, so that's exciting too. But let's get started. Um, so let's get our pencil, and I'm going to do just like Sonia Delaney did, and I'm going to draw a line here through my, pap my paper right from the top of my bottom, right to the top of my bottom of my page, and then I'm going to make another one. I'm not going to make a perfect X. I'm kind of going to go like that. Mm -hmm. Then, and you can make yours however you want, actually. So before I say then, um, you can do this however you wish. I'm going to start to draw some semicircles like this, and you know what? Maybe this one here is going to be a bigger semicircle, just like that. And maybe here I'm going to make a circle that goes right through both. And see how that's not perfectly centered? That's okay. So I have some, I have a triangle here, and I have a triangle here, and one here, and one here. I'm gonna add some squares. So I'm just gonna go and add some lines to maybe make some squares, just like so. And you know what, this one maybe I'm gonna make just some lines. Maybe they're squares that go up here, but this cuts it off. And these are layered, so you can't see them. Very technical. <laughs> and then I'm going to make some more lines there. And maybe I'm going to make another kind of semicircle here. So I'm just kind of adding in some shapes, just like that. I kind of like that. I'm actually going to make one more here. That is it for sketching today. Yes, There's, it wasn't much for me to explain because it's up to you where you want your lines and your shapes um, and your curves and your circles to go um, because cubism is a combination of different geometric shapes that kind of all meld together somehow, right? Makes it look interesting. It's not like a perfect circle or a perfect triangle. It's a lot of kind of mishmash stuff that is really interesting to our brains and to our eyes. Um, even sometimes when your eyes are looking at something um, or have you ever seen those pictures when people are using their camera and they're doing a panoramic and the panoramic makes like the dog that's supposed to be right here make it looks like makes it look like this long and all kind of choppy. That's interesting to look at. We look for those, right? It's a little weird, but yeah, it's really cool to look at. So cubism um, and what Sonia Deloney did was try to like find new ways of looking at stuff, and that's what we're kind of doing here. And no two pictures will be the same, and that's okay. So since we've got the sketching down, let's start to paint. So again, there's no real um, method to this. Um, it does work really well if you put contrasting colors beside each other. Um, here, you know what? Let me. I'm going to bring up the artwork one more time, just so I can show you what some of the colors that we can use in the artwork are. There, there. So there's some bright reds. Um, there's some like kind of turquoises. There's really light colors. Like, see if you look at autumn. Um, there's some like pastels in there as well. Um, but you can add whatever kind of colors you like into yours to make it exciting. So let's get started. I'm going to transition back over. And what color shall I start with today? You know what? I'm actually going to start with a yellow. So I'm going to take a little bit of, of water because I'm working with watercolor paper. And I'm going to take some yellow here. Let me take a little bit of white just to make that yellow a little stronger. And what I'm going to do is fill in a few spots with this color. So I'm going to go right here. And when um, Sonia Delaney was doing her artwork, if you look very carefully at it, um, the lines are very crisp and very clear. Um, so it's kind of the beginning of kind of graphic art and graphic lines. Because when you're making stuff on computer um, or with different tools, 
um, it's easy to get very crisp and clear lines. It's not always that easy to get that when we're using our own hands because, well, we are, you know, organic human beings, right? So we do things that are not exactly perfect and we don't have to be perfect, um, but it's, we're not designed that way, right? We're designed to think a little differently and have gray areas and consider different points of view. And it's the same when we're using our bodies, right? Things aren't exactly meant to be perfect. There's a little room for a little bit of flexibility. Um, but when she was doing her artwork, and there's a lot of artists that work this way, um, she took a lot of time to make her lines really clean and crisp. And I'm going to try my best to do that today. Um, but this is a really good, this is why I kind of mentioned that this project is really good to relax um, and to kind of just get, you know, sucked into, get involved with, right? And even look, I made a mistake there. But because it's a light color and I'm using opaque colors, so colors you can't really see through, I know later that I can just go in and cover that one right up. Should I put yellow anywhere else? You know what? Yes, I'm going to put, I like this yellow. It's nice and it's nice and deep. So I'm going to do this line here, just like so. And if you've noticed too, um, I pressed really hard with my pencil. If you're going to do that with your pen, um, if you're going to be using pencil for your artwork, um, make sure that you press lightly. I only press a little bit harder on camera so that you guys can see what I'm doing. But when I'm making artwork otherwise, I press really lightly because see that you can see that yellow, um, the pencil, sorry, through the yellow. Um, I could easily fix that by making a darker color to cover it. Um, but that means I'll lose some of that yellow. So just make sure that when you are um, doing your artwork today um, or anytime you press lightly with your pencil, unless you have to show somebody like me. So I'm making a little bit more of that yellow that I really like. And you know what? I'm going to turn it into an orange. So I'm going to take a little bit of red and mix that in. And let's see what kind of orange I get. Okay. So I like that orange, but I'm going to make it a little duller. Yeah, I'm going to make it look a little bit more, a little bit more opaque. And you're going to think I'm crazy in a second, but watch what I'm going to do. So I added a little bit more red too. I'm going to add a little bit more white. And right across the color wheel um, from orange is a little bit of green. So I'm going to take just a teeny, itsy bitsy, tiny bit of green. And I'm going to mix it in. And don't worry, it will come back. But see how it makes it a little more subdued, means a little kind of like a little calmer, a little browner. I'm going to go with that color because that is very Sonia Deloney to me. <laughs> so where am I going to put this orange? Let's put this orange here. So you're just going to find some more spots to put in your next color. Just like so. And you're just going to work through this whole painting to fill up all these areas. Just like that. Um, now, another thing, when I was researching Sonia Delani, um, I think I already mentioned in the intro, but she was from the Ukraine, um, and she spent most of her time in Paris, obviously. She was born in Ukraine, um, she moved to Paris, and she actually was married to another famous artist um, named Robert Delani, who made similar kind of artwork. He was very into um, kind of graphic lines and stuff as well. Um, oops, I went over my line a little bit. No big deal. Um, but they actually, they got married and they had a little boy named Charles. Um, and her inspiration for a lot of this kind of patchwork, um, mismatched kind of cubist, I guess you could say style, beginning of cubist style, was because of her son Charles. Um, because there were people in her village or where she learned, where she lived, um, that made patchwork blankets. And after she had her son, Charles, she was like, oh, I'd really love to make Charles a blanket. Um, and then as she started making this blanket, she noticed that a lot of the patchwork um, kind of qualities that went into the blanket, she kind of was inspired by that to make art about it. So they were kind of using scraps and other parts that they could find or what was available to make these different parts of the blanket and then sewed them all together. So she decided that she was going to do that with paint. Yeah, so that's kind of where her inspiration came from for some of these kind of artworks, those ones that I showed you um, on the screen a minute ago. Yeah, because if you, that would be really pretty, actually. I'm sure somewhere somebody's made blankets like that. 
Um, when I'm on Instagram, it sounds kind of funny, but um, one of my favorite things to search on Instagram is quilters. Quilt. There are some beautiful, amazing quilters on Instagram, and the stuff that they can make with with cloth, with fabric, is phenomenal. Um, I really would love to learn how to quilt, but I don't know. I don't know if I could. Of course I could. I probably just need to put um, some more time into that. But I probably could paint. I mean, could make a quilt. See, maybe I should just paint quilts. <laughs> so look what happened. I went over top of that yellow. And my orange is not as opaque as I thought it would be. It's not as, it's not, as uh, not see through as I thought. So I'm going to take a little bit more red. And I'm going to take a little bit more white. Because white helps things be a little bit more see through. And I'm going to go back over that spot. And another thing that you can do um, is see how I turn my, pa my painting, my paper, so I can get a better angle. I think that's part of the reason why I made that little bit of a mistake there. But you know what? It's only a mistake if I say it's a mistake, right? Let's just turn it into what I wanted it to be anyway, making the best of the situation. Oh, look, I did it again. <laughs> Let's see. Maybe because I'm talking too much. Oh, actually, I can show you something really cool to do with that after. Um, should I put a little bit more orange? Yeah, I'm going to do this one here. Actually, no, I'm going to do this one here. And then we'll move on to another color. Now, I'm going um, I'm going to kind of work with the colors. Um, so far, I've worked with the colors that I, I already was working with, which I'll explain that in a second. So I went from yellow, and from yellow I made um, like an orange because I already had yellow on my brush. Um, and you can do that too. You can just kind of take your color and go from the next color to make your palette. But I'm actually going to switch it right up now. And I'm going to make a blue. I'm going to take some of my blue. And I said make a blue because I'm not going to use this straight blue here. I'm going to make a different color from it. I'm going to take a little bit of green and mix that in. Oh, I like that. It's like the very beginnings of a teal. And I'm going to take some water to mix it in just so it flows a little bit better. And I'm going to do this spot right here because orange and blue. Oh, actually, I lied earlier. Um, green is not across the color wheel from orange. Um, blue is. Whoa. Art. Oopsie. Sorry, everybody. Um, green is across from red. Wow. Well, you know what? It just told me that my brain really wanted to add green to that orange. And I agree with it because I love that color that I made. <laughs> so anyway, yes, blue is right across from orange. Green is across from red. But we all make mistakes, right? No big deal. There we go. Oh, I love that. I like the way that that's turning out. So you know what I think I'm going to do here? Remember in one of the paintings I showed you before, there, were some, there was a color and then it went lighter and then lighter? I think I'm going to make this a lighter blue and this one an even lighter blue. Yeah, I think we're going to do that. And then you know what? I'm going to do this one over here. And I'm going to cover some of that like overflow there. And I'm taking my time. I'm trying to take my time. Just like so to paint in that area here. And paint in that area here. Sometimes when I'm talking to you, oops, yep, see what happens when I'm talking to you guys? My focus is on what I'm saying and not always what I'm doing. Um, when I was teaching art classes all the years before, one of the hardest things that was hardest things to learn as an artist um, was how to talk and create at the same time. Although some of the best conversations I've ever had with some of my students um, have been during art class. Because when your brain is relaxed like this, um, you're able to just kind of like, you know, relax your brain and talk about stuff and things sometimes become clearer. Um, so, yeah, it's a very interesting thing. It's a very hard skill for artists to learn, especially very talkative artists. And I'm not usually this talkative, but when I'm teaching you guys on here, it's better than listening to nothing. <laughs> Although maybe I should look into some music. Ooh, that would be nice. I guess then it would be the same song. Oh, well. Oh, I like that. I really like that color. So I'm going to leave that just like that. I'm actually going to take a little bit of this blue, move it to a new spot, take some white, mix it in. I'm going to make a lighter version of this blue. I'm going to make it pretty light. Even lighter. 
And remember a little tip, always take from the side of your white, not from the middle of your white, um, because then you might not have any more white left. And then I'm gonna work right here. Is that different enough? Can you see it on camera? Oh yeah, it looks different. Oh, I like that. Oh, and you know what? I just had an idea. Because we're gonna paint, we're painting just kind of like Sonia Delani, but this is also our artwork, right? We want it to look like our work and we wanna have our own little touch on it. So I'm gonna show you what to do with that too. Okay, a little bit more. Oops, I don't know if my hair was on camera. Um, hopefully everyone's having a lovely day today. It's nice and sunny. And I hope everyone had a great weekend. Did you guys catch the, did you, anyone see the rainbow yesterday? Um, it was amazing. I didn't see it. I saw pictures of it afterwards. Actually, my dad called right away. And he's like, did you see the rainbow? And I was like, no, I didn't. Um, we missed it. But that's okay. Hopefully we get some more rain. Um, and then we'll be able to see many more of them. But the conditions were perfect for rainbows yesterday. Because it was raining and then sunny at the same time. And then it was raining in different spots and sunny in different spots. And apparently it was a huge rainbow here in Niagara, right over the falls, which is really cool. Okay, so I'm going to finish up this spot, and then I'm going to show you that little thing that I was just thinking of. We're going to go like this. Oh, did everyone hear Frankie? Something must be hilarious. So we'll do here. And this is a project um, that, like I said, you can take as long as you want, maybe do a little bit every day. Um, a kind of cool um, art therapy project that I read about before, I haven't done it, but maybe I should, um, is make a, you make like a 3D, um, or break it into a grid, break your project into a grid. Um, and then every day, do a little painting about with a color that kind of explains how you feel. So if you had a really happy day, maybe like a bright yellow or something, or like a bright yellow with patterns. Or if you had like a sad day, maybe like a blue or a purple. Or if you had like a sad day that kind of started sad and then you got mad and then you got happy, like what would that look like, right? What would the pattern be? Um, that's a really cool way to keep track of how you're feeling, but also um, to make some beautiful art, right? So I made a really, really light blue from whatever I had left over and watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to kind of sew these two things together here. I'm going to put a line right over top of the spot where they blended and that is going to be right there. Yeah. And you know what? I'm going to do a thicker one here too, right in between these two. I'm going to start here and just pull it straight across just like so. Yeah. And then you know what? I'm going to do one of those here because I really like those. Maybe a little bit thicker. There we go. Okay, now you know what, to make it even more interesting, I'm gonna take a little bit of this blue, and I'm gonna do a line here, right in between those two colors. What do you guys think? I kinda like that, it adds some contrast. So what am I thinking now? What should go in here? I think I'd like to add some green. Now this green, a little bit bright for me. I'm gonna make it a little bit yellower, a little bit more like a chartreuse green. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I have this cool green here. Oh, it's not a cool green, it's actually a warm green because I added yellow, but it works really well. And I'm going to put it in, where do I think should it should go? I'm gonna put one right here, I think. Just like so. Yeah, right to the end. Right. Um, oh, also, I forgot to kind of mention, um, Sonia Delani was, um, she was actually a fashion designer as well as a painter. Um, remember how I kind of mentioned in a previous story that she was making like a blanket for her son, Charles? Um, she used to actually design um, bathing suits for women. Yeah, she had, and a lot of her um, art, or sorry, a lot of her bathing suits had her own uh, fabric designs on them and believe it or not she made a lot of geometric patterns just like this so stuff that wasn't um, always the most popular right so things um, I'm not sure if people know but there was an art movement called um, art deco that happened in the 1930s um, and it was very geometric so lots of triangles and angles and squares and very ornate 
um, designs. Like a lot of buildings are made in the Art Deco style, like the Empire State Building, um, things that you'd recognize. Um, and a lot of patterns for, um, for fabric before for clothing were like, you know, plain old colors, like color, you know, blue and, you know, what single colors, um, or like flowers, right? Cause girls are supposed to, we're supposed to wear flowers. Anyone can wear whatever they want nowadays, which is awesome. Um, but having geometric stuff was looked at as kind of like more masculine. Um, but because a lot of stuff was changing, um, and some barriers were being broken and a whole bunch of those kind of things. She had a special freedom. She was able to find it and kind of push forward through it to incorporate some of these more geometric patterns in her fashion. And one of the things that um, was kind of double groundbreaking was that she made bathing suits with this pattern on it. Yeah. So pretty neat. She's a cool, she's a kind of a cool lady to learn about in terms of art. Hmm, now where else should I put some green? You know what? I'm going to do a green here because it's close to that one, close to that one, but not quite touching. So I'm going to do the green right here. And then I'm going to make a really, really, really light green, I think, like a really yellowy green called a chartreuse. And we're going to put some of those lines on there as well. And then you know what I think I might be missing? A pink, like a bright corally pink. I think that's what I want to put on here. Next. There we go. Okay. Do I need some green on the bottom? Yeah, let's put a little bit of green. We'll make that one single line right beside that yellow some green. All right, right here. There we go. All right. So I'm going to take this. I was going to wash my brush, but I'm not going to. I'm going to move some of this over a little bit more yellow make it like a really light yellow take some white yeah that's what I'm looking for it's kind of really like bright or really um very opaque not see-through green and you know what I'm going to put a line here kind of clean up that edge and also if you're noticing that your paint's not see-through enough let it dry, um, and then you can put another layer on afterwards. Because sometimes, depending on the kind of paint you're using and where it's from and the colors that are in it, the pigments, um, sometimes things are a little bit more see-through. Like red is a very weak pigment for the most part. Most times you have to see, you can see through red. Um, same with yellow. Yellow can be very, very weak. You can see through it. Um, blues tend to be a little bit stronger. Oranges are kind of a mixture because they're both two light pigments, right? Red and yellow are kind of light. Sometimes when you mix them together, they get really strong. Other times, not so much. It just depends on what you, where you've got your paint and what kind of paint it is. Cause I, and I wanted to say, like, if you have really good paint, they'll cover, but that's not true. Sometimes it just depends on what pigments are in there. So actually, I'm going to take this. I'm going to make it even a little bit lighter because why not? A little bit more yellow. <laughs> and I'm going to do inside here, this color, just like so. And I might have to do a second coat, or I can add something else on there. So another cool thing you can do, um, I'm not going to do that on mine today, I don't think, but um, you know, the last couple of projects we've done, we've used some pastel. Um, you can go ahead and add some pastel work to this as well afterwards. I'm going to go and do this color here. I know it's close to the yellow, but I think that might get, make it interesting. And also when I put that coral pink in, I think it will make it kind of pop. Because yeah, they're really close right next to each other. They don't really do anything too exciting. They're just relaxing. We're going to make them more excited with some of that um, coral that we're going to do next. Okay. So... To make a coral, we're going to go with more yellow, take a little bit of red, just like so. Maybe more yellow. I'm using a lot of yellow today. I'm going to take some white and just mix that in. And you know what? I need a little bit more red. I'm a little bit hesitant to use too much red because I know red can kind of take over things sometimes. 
but I think that's the color I'm going for right there. And I'm going to do hmm, this whole part here, which is kind of coral color. Mm -hmm. I like that color. You know what? It's a little bit close to the orange. So you know what? I'm even going to make it more redder. Hmm. Do you guys hear that little bang? Um, we've had some big like bumblebees around us lately, and they keep trying to bump into our window. Not on purpose, I don't think. It's not like they're trying to bump into the window, but they keep doing that. I'm not sure if you can hear it on camera or not. There we go. Yeah, I like that better. We're going to make it more pink, because why not? <laughs> there we go. And it's okay if your block that you're painting is two different colors from start to finish. Why not? It can totally do that. This is your artwork. Oh, good morning, Finn. No, oh, no, he's laying back down. It's very watermelon pink. I like that. And then I'm going to do this one up here. And I don't have that many more spaces to do. And this painting too would look really cool if you, um, you know, stay, stick with stuck, sorry, with one color and just kept making it slightly li like lighter or brighter or darker or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, you don't have to do as many mixed colors as I've done in here. We're going to go like that. Oh, see, there's that contrast. It kind of went pop, made those two colors even brighter. And I'm going to do the same thing here, except I'm going to make it a little bit wider, just like so. There we go. And then I'm going to do maybe this little spot here, because I like that. Oh, and then you know what I know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make a really light pink, like take this color, make it really light, and finish up some of these other spots here. Because I like how it's light, kind of the little bit of white spots break it up, but I don't want them to be, you know, plain old white. So I'm just going to take a bunch of white, mix what I have on my brush to make a really light pink, maybe even a little bit more. And I'm going to make those spots, these colors here. Okay. And now I was just thinking my lines are very uh, crisp and clean. Yours do not have to be like that. It might actually look cooler and more interesting if your lines aren't always, you know, super super straight or super perfect. First of all, nothing's perfect, right? But um, yeah, I think mine doesn't have a lot of looseness to it and that's okay. It's good to experiment with different kinds of art, right? Different ways that you can create art, how loose your lines can be, how strong they can be, um, if they can look soft, if they can look harsh. It's good to practice all of them because you never know when you're going to want to use some of them in your art. And what looks good and when is up to you when you're making your own stuff. Oh, I like how that's darker in that fighter. I know I did add some light, but it's similar enough that it looks familiar to our brains but it's different enough that it looks interesting. Okay, and then I'm gonna do this circle here. And you know what, I'm gonna make it pretty light. Okay, there we go. Now I can see a little bit of shadow through my white there. So all I'll have to do is just take another layer. Oops. And go over that. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking for a sec just so I can focus. <laughs> Sometimes I notice I hold my breath when I'm doing things I want to be really straight. Yep. Now, you know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to take some white with my fine point brush after. I'm going to add some white lines to this to make some more contrast, to lighten it up. This is also when, um, when all your spots are filled, you can let it dry. 
and then take some pastels and add some line work on top, just like that. So I'm going to use some of this, actually, and I'm going to do a line here. I've just decided. <laughs> right there. And then I'm going to do a line here, just like this, for all the way down. Okay. And I'm going to do one more here. Just like that. And that one doesn't exactly look pink because the green is canceling out some of that red that's in that pink. So it looks a little bit white, which is exciting. I think that's so cool. The way that our minds work with color, it's so neat. Okay. So there is most of my Sonia Delaney inspired painting. Um, I'm just going to take my fine point brush. I'm gonna use this one actually. Oh, no, there's my good one. Yay, I found it. Where is it? Oh, here it is. Perfect. Yay. Sometimes my son Sam paints, and I thought he took this one for his stuff, and he makes really cool pictures of trains. Um, so I love that he paints, so I don't take the stuff back. I don't mind. If you're going to use it, please use it. But I found this brush again. So all I'm going to do is do some maybe a little bit thicker spots of white, just like so. Do some here, and then I'm going to do, um, you know what, I'm going to do one here, and I'm going to do one here, okay, <laughs> I'm going to do one here, kind of following along these lines now. I'm going to stop this one here, though. There we go. Where else should I put it? Let's see. Hmm. I'm going to put one here. And this is where, this is all up to you, right? It's not me saying, mm, put one here, put one there. You can do however you want for your artwork. You don't have to make it look one way or the other. I think I'm almost done with these white. I think I can get carried away with this very easily. Because um, my brain likes to outline things and likes to have very strong um, places that color is contained and I could very easily outline this whole thing which you know what if you want to and it's relaxing for you do it yeah and I think I need any other ones let's see sometimes it looks different on camera so I take a peek I'm gonna do just this spot here just like so. just one side of this circle Just like so. And again, the white's kind of see-through, no problem. I can go through later and do another layer. Okay. So there, nope, wait, sorry, one more spot. I want to do something here. Just a really fine line between these two, just like so. Okay, that's it, because if I keep going, it's going to be forever. Oh, look, I did it again. Um, so this is a project that can keep going for a long time. You can, you know, you can look at it and change different ways and places that you want to put the art after, right? Some, some details and some new stuff. Um, yeah, if it's yours, you can keep going. This can be like a project that takes you a whole year. Probably not. Sometimes those are frustrating, um, but it's up to you. Okay. Now it's done. Brushes go down. That's another one of the hard things it is as an artist, knowing when to stop. Okay, because you're enjoying it so much, you want it to be even better and better and better. Um, but I think this is done just the way it is, and I like it. So thank you for joining me um, for um, painting today, for learning about Sonia Delaney. Um, and I hope you make some amazing um, cubist, uh, geometric, and color exploration-inspired art. Um, and I would love to see them. So if you have any photos or if you created any masterpieces using this video, please, I would love to see pictures of them. Um, or if you have any feedback or comments or anything, please send an email to kdupuis, K-D-U-P-U-I-S, at notlpl.org. I'd love to see them. And of course, feedback, comments, suggestions, anything you'd like, 
um, to send my way, please do. I'd love to see them. Um, and if you are looking for other painting videos to work on, um, we have probably close to 20 of them now on our YouTube channel, which you are visiting right now. So there are different animals. There are different um, artists to explore. Um, there's always a new one every single week. So there's lots of them on there for you to explore and create. And we'd love to see those too. Okay. Um, so thank you again for joining us, for joining me. Um, we'll see you next week. Um, we'll be live on our Facebook page next Monday. Next Monday. Um, and otherwise, I hope you have a great rest of your Monday afternoon. And we'll see you soon. Okay. Bye, everybody.